In this video, we're going to learn another popular way of indexing a vector database, and that's inverted file index. And it's also available in the FICE library. The indexing portion of inverted file index works by first clustering all of the vectors that you want to store in your vector database into in list, that's a parameter, in list clusters using k means. Uh, the clustering algorithm. And so here I've plotted uh, four clusters of points on a 2D plane, and essentially all of these can be your embeddings. We clustered them up first into, into groups, and here are these vectors were clustered up into four groups. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use those cluster centroids. Now each the cluster centroid for each of these clusters is the average vector. So we take the average of all of these points and it's going to be the centroid. And it's supposed to be representative of where all of these uh, points in the cluster are in space. And in this example, it really is representative of those different clusters. And then what IBF is going to do is that for each cluster, right, it's going to keep a posting list of the IDs of the vectors in that cluster. So you're going to have in, on, in when it writes when it stores when it writes the code like the code for it, the data structure is going to have the centroid being the key, right, and then the this this key the centroid is going to map to a list of the IDs for all of these vectors that are in its cluster. And so when you go to add a new vector to your to your uh, vector database, what you're going to do is you're going to find the closest centroid and you're going to store it in that centroid's posting list. And so let's just say that the closest centroid for a new vector was centroid 2, right? And what we're going to do now is we're going to store it in that list, um, you know, for the... Uh, for that centroid. And so essentially you could think of this as managing like a hash map under the hood where the keys are the centroids and the, each key maps to a list of vectors. And those vectors are in the same cluster or group as that centroid. And vectors that are in the same group, they're similar, right? And so we're expecting that if this new any new query vector is similar to this centroid, then it must share similarities to all the vectors in that centroid's group. So now it comes time to retrieve. So when it's time to retrieve a vector or a top k result, this is how it's done. We're going to when we're querying for a new vector, we're first going to create that query vector. We're going to find the closest another parameter here, in probe cluster centroid. So we may find one, two, whatever you want. You can set in probe to be equal to uh, all, you know, as, as many as uh, to all the clusters to the same amount as the number of clusters, or it's usually set to a subset of clusters to help with speed of retrieval. But let's just say like in probe was equal to two. That means we're gonna find the two most uh, similar cluster centroids. And then after that, you're going to explore these clusters. So you're going to look within each of these clusters. In our case, it was two. So these two clusters, you're going to look within each one of them and try to find the, you're going to find the closest vectors to your query vector out of those two clusters. You're only going to explore those clusters. So that's why it makes it so fast is that we don't even bother with searching over all the other vectors. And then and once you got all the results from these in probe clusters, you're then going to return the top K most similar from those clusters. And so remember that IVF is really governed by these two parameters in list. That's going to be the number of clusters. So if you have more clusters, you're going to have a small, a smaller uh, number of vectors per cluster. But if you remember, if you've taken our machine learning course or you've taken a machine learning course and you learned about k-means clustering, the more clusters you create, uh, the, you know, it, it, you start to lose some information. You really are supposed to find the optimal number of clusters that properly segments the data. And so you do that by using the elbow method. We won't go into that, but you need to find the optimal number of clusters to be able to do this. Um, but you can choose however many clusters you want. It's just that if you uh, choose more clusters, um, you will have a smaller posting list per cluster. 
and it will get closer and closer and closer to brute force surge. N probe is going to be the second parameter. N probes the number of clusters to search at retrieval time. And so the the thing is, is that if you probe more clusters, um, if you, let's just say, instead of two, you did three or four, you are going to get better results. You really will, because you'll be searching over more vectors in the in the database. The only problem is, is that that will be a little bit slower. And so for a lot of retrieval applications, especially things like search or anything that's used in, a, in an environment, like an online environment where you need uh, to retrieve results very quickly, latency is going to be something you have to keep in mind. And, you know, sometimes you are willing to give off, you give up a little bit of that recall. You know, recall being the amount of relevant results uh, your algorithm can find. You're willing to give up a little bit of that for the sake of having a faster algorithm. And so that is inverted file index. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to another FICE implementation of IVF.